Morning, everybody. Thank you so very much for joining me for another practice. So when you're ready, find your way to a seated position of some type. Make sure you're sitting up nice and tall. Whenever you've accomplished that, close your eyes and redirect your focus to your breath. Let's take the next few moments to focus on your inhale and your exhale. And whenever your mind wanders elsewhere, notice and then redirect to your breath. Elongated exhales are calming for the mind and the body. And Brahmari Pranayama is an excellent breath to create longer exhales. It makes it easier because you create a buzzing sound like a bee. The buzzing sound in and of itself slows down your breath. Now today, as we do this together, focus on the space between your eyebrows throughout. Buzz like a bee through your nose until you release every drop of your air. As soon as you end one round, begin another one right away, and I'll let you know when to stop. So when you're ready, deep breath in. Turn to normal breathing patterns for now. And just like before, pay attention to your breath. And join your hands together in a prayer at your chest and bring to mind someone you'd like to dedicate today's practice to. And send your person some good energy mentally. You ready? Open your eyes and I'll have you start with a twist. So take your right hand to your left knee, place your left fingertips on the floor behind you, and slide your left hip just a slight bit further backwards. The next time you inhale, sit up just a little taller. With an exhale, rotate to your left and gaze straight backward over your shoulder behind. For the next few moments, use your exhales to tighten down on the twist. And keep in mind that you're still warming up, so just go nice and slow about that. And releasing the twist on that side, switch to the other. Slide your right sitting bone back just a little bit. Take your left hand to your right knee and place your other hand behind you. And just like before, sit up tall. Try to lock your ribs down in the front as you do that. And twist your spine to the right. And gaze straight backward over your shoulder behind. Huge inhales and huge exhales. Every time you exhale, tighten down on the twist until you find a spot that feels nice. And releasing your twist, come to the cat-cow create position. The four-pointed kneeling position with your hands just under your shoulders. 
and your knees a bit behind your hips. Once you've got that, round your back with your exhales. Arch your spine with your inhales. And carry on back and forth. And breath by breath by breath. Just let your spinal column unwind. Really press down through your hands when you're rounding the spine and scoop your tail under. And shift your hips back to the heels for the child's pose momentarily. To stretch the side of your body, walk your hands over to your right. Let your left armpit drop toward the floor and let your hips settle close to your heels. Walk your hands off to the same pose on the other side. Once they've gone over there, just stretch through your fingertips and breathe deeply again. And use this to open up the space between your ribs. Walk your hands all the way back through center. Curl your toes under and back and lift your hips upward into the air for the down dog. As you do that, press your chest toward your thighs and then paddle. Bend one leg, straighten the other one, and alternate back and forth between both sides to stretch your hamstrings and your calves. And even now, some slow and expansive breaths. And take a look forward at the front of your mat. Step your left foot forward to a lunge. Take your back knee all the way down to the ground. Initially, plant your hands on the floor just inside of your foot and let your hips drop a little bit closer to the floor. Tuck your ribs down in the front as well and just use this to open your hamstrings a little more directly. At the same time, you get some stretch in your hip flexors, those muscles that connect your spine to your right leg. Curl your toes under behind you. When you're ready, step all the way back to the down dog. Lunge your right foot forward to the front of your mat and take your back knee down to the earth. Place both hands on the floor just inside of your foot. And just as you did before, let your hips sink down and toward the earth. Sink them down till you feel stretch in the back of your right leg and some opening in the front of the left leg. Now, finally, this transition is just a slight bit different. Plant your hands just near the front of your mat. Step all the way forward once you have. Come up to the tips of your fingers. And then take a gentle forward fold with your exhale. From there, use an inhale to sweep all the way upwards and then to stand. Join your hands in a prayer at your chest. Now, to inhale, sweep your arms outwards and upwards. Interlace your hands, point your index finger up, and extend upwards through your arms. From there, side bend your torso to your right. Gaze up and to the left, and stretch strongly through your fingertips as you hold. Use your next inhale to come back up to the top. With an exhale, switch over for the same posture on the other side. Extend outward through your fingertips, and if possible, gaze upward under your armpit toward the sky. Use an inhale to come all the way back up. Forward fold with your exhale and take both hands down to the floor. Lift to your fingertips. Heel toe your feet together if they're apart. Then bend both legs and use an inhale to sweep your arms all the way up to the roof. Join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Rotate to the right. Cross your left elbow all the way over your legs. And with your hands pressing together, rotate your spinal column. Slow, deep breaths. The next time you breathe in, sweep both arms back up to the top. Bring your hands together in a prayer. Switch for the same posture on the other side. Rotate left, hook your elbow over your leg, join your hands together in a prayer. 
and drive your hands together to rotate your spine. Now use an inhale to sweep both arms all the way up. Straighten your legs and stand up tall. Once you've done so, take your hands to your waist and heel toe your feet apart until they're separated by hips distance or so. Now a gentle back bend. Squeeze your elbows back in together. Shift your hips forward a little bit and then rise up to the front of your ribs to bend. Hold forward the next time you exhale. Bend your legs. Grab a hold of your big toes with your index and middle finger. Lift your chest away from your thighs. Hike your hips a little higher to work towards straighter legs. Either stay there or fold forward with your elbows bent out to the sides. Some slow, deep breaths there as well. Try to rock a little bit away forward toward the balls of your feet to stack your pelvis above your ankles beneath. And for the next part, a slight shift. Lift all the way up to your fingertips. Now again, you can bend your knees if it helps, but rock your way backward toward your heels. If possible, lift the balls of your feet completely off of the floor and keep your chest lifted for this one here. Lock your eyes on one single point, which will help you preserve the balance. And take your feet all the way back down Bend your knees substantially and plant your hands on the floor. Step or hop back to the high push-up position. Lower down through Chaturanga with an exhale. From there, roll over your toes to a back bend with an inhale. And lift your hips back up in the air for the down dog stretch with your exhale. This time around, press out through your hands and let both heels press closer to the ground. If they don't touch, that's totally okay. Just press them down until you feel stretch in the backs of your legs. All right, take a look forward. Once you've done so, step your right foot to your hands. Turn your back heel down to the ground and use an inhale to come up to warrior two with your torso facing sideways. Lean forward over your right leg, stack your arm on your thigh, reach your left arm all the way over your side. Now for the next few moments, create a long line of energy from your left ankle out through your fingertips. Just stretch firmly out through your fingertips to lengthen your side. The next time you inhale, come back up to warrior two. Then straighten out your leg and turn your feet to face the long end of your mat. Rotate your left foot backward. And bend your leg substantially, leaning all the way over your leg to extend the side angle. Reach your right arm all the way over your ear. Just like before, create a long line of energy from your back ankle out through your fingertips. And twist open to the side as you hold that. Fill your lungs with your inhales and empty them out completely with your exhales. And use an inhale to rise all the way back up for full warrior two. Straighten out your leg entirely. Take your hands to your waist and turn your feet to face sideways. And then shifting your hips forward, take a standing back bend with an inhale. Fold forward as you exhale, both hands down to the ground. Lift to your fingers on the inhale, turn your toes out, and bend your legs substantially, and come up to your fingertips till you're relatively parallel to the floor with your chest. Then maintaining that parallel positioning with legs bent, reach your arms all the way out to your sides. Take the next few moments to hover there to build some heat and strength. And if you want to make it a little harder, reach your arms all the way forward. Turn your palms upward in the air. Lift your arms up like you're lifting a block of ice above your head. And let your arms momentarily hang near the floor. Use an inhale to stand up, straightening your legs and reaching your arms up to the roof. Extend your arms out to your sides. Take a really big step to get back to the front of your mat. Once you're there, join your hands together in a prayer. There's an inhale to sweep your arms outwards and upwards. Forward fold with your exhale. 
Lift to your fingertips on the inhale. Chaturanga push up with an exit. The up dog then with an inhale. And the down dog stretch with your exhale. Step your right foot forward again. Turn your left heel down to the floor and use an inhale to come up to warrior one. Either let your hands be apart or interlace your fingers and extend up to your fingertips. For the next few moments, bend your front leg, straighten the back one, gaze up toward your outstretched hands and breathe with that. Drop into your front leg just a slight bit more if you're able. Straighten out your leg entirely. Turn your feet to face the edge of your mat. Rotate your left foot back to the rear. Spin your back toes in just a touch. Bend your left leg for warrior one on the other side. Keep extending and reaching all the way up through your hands. And back leg straight as you drop down into the hip crease of your front leg. And then straighten out your leg entirely. Turn your feet to face off to the edge of the class. And for now, step your feet all the way together, either at the front of the mat or at the center. I'm going to spin off to the edge here so you can see my body for the next one. Now, when you do yoga, a lot of the poses that you work on build strength in your quads, but it's also important to get your glutes, and this will help with that. So reach both arms all the way out to your sides. Swing your left leg behind the right, and I'm going to do my right so it looks like we're doing the same thing. And then bend your legs and hook one knee behind the other. The next time you exhale, stand up. Join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Arms out. Inhale your left leg back. Exhale to stand. Hands together at your chest. Eight more times. Inhale. You can sink lower if you like. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Five to go. Inhale. Squeeze your booty at the top. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. One. Hands together in a prayer. Now again, reach your arms all the way out to your sides. This time, swing your right leg behind the left. And if you want to modify, just sink a little bit. Use an exhale to straighten and squeeze your backside. Inhale, arms out, drop down. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale. Exhale. Five more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. One. Feet all the way together. Now, if you're in the middle of your mat like me, step all the way back up to the front. And then to build some chest strength, Use an inhale to sweep your arms all the way upwards. Forward fold the next time you exhale. Now for the curl, lift up to your fingers. Squat down on your feet. Move your knees all the way out to your sides. And initially, come up to your tiptoes. From there, rotate from one side to the other. And see if you can get your legs a little higher up on your arms. Now if you'd like to modify, lean just a little bit of weight forward into your hands. For the next few moments, you can absolutely hold there. If you want to take it further, though, lean further ahead. Come up to the tips of your toes. Dig your fingers into the floor and look forward. And then try to lift one foot up, both feet completely off of the floor. Hold steady and breathe. And then take your feet all the way back down to the earth. Let your knees settle to the floor beneath you. And for the moment, find your way to the child's pose. And let your elbows come to the floor. Your hands meet the earth. And if you're comfortable with it, let your head come down to rest upon your hands. For the next few moments, just redirect your attention back to your breath. 
Let your inhales fill your back. And let your exhales empty your lungs completely. All right, for now, walk your hands all the way forward to the front of your mat and come back up to the cat cow kriya position. Curl your toes under behind you and lift your hips up in the air for the down dog stretch. Now this time, step your right foot all the way forward. Grab that foot and to turn the toes out to the right. Come up onto your left fingertips and turn them out to the side. And from there, place your right hand on your knee and initially just rotate toward your bent leg in the front. Take a few breaths for your body to get used to that. And belly crunch down to the front so your chest comes closer to your leg. Walk your left hand just a little further in. And then as you twist, take your left inner chest and shoulder toward your right inner knee. And just keep breathing deeply. Now releasing that twist, walk your hands across the ground to face the long edge of your mat. Once you've done so, spin around to face the rear of the mat itself. Your rear heel turns up. This time the left toes turn up. You come up to your right fingertips and turn them sideways. Now for the next few moments with your left hand resting on the leg, rotate your torso to the leg itself. Now first keep your spine relatively long and straight as you continue twisting. Now take up some of the space between your chest and your leg. Walk your hand a little further in. Round your spine a little bit like you're doing a sit-up or a belly crunch. And still twisting, take your left shoulder toward your right inner knee. Now release that same twist. Walk your hands across the ground to face the long edge of your mat. Once you've done so, come all the way up to the tips of your fingers. Place your right hand on the floor beneath your chest. Rotating off to the left, reach your left arm straight upwards into the air. For the next few moments, hold that and breathe deeply again. Windmill your other hand down to the floor, rotating off to the side, extend your other arm up to the ceiling. For the next few moments, slide your shoulder blades away from your ears as you continue to twist your spine. And windmill slowly, both of your hands all the way back down to the earth. Use an inhale to lift up to your fingertips. Take your hands to your waist from there. Once you've done so, stand all the way up. Take just a gentle back bend once you've reached the top. And then exhale all the way back upwards. Reach your arms way out to the sides. Take a huge step to get back to the front of your mat. And then next, draw your right knee all the way up to your chest. Grab it with your right hand and help it come up just a little higher. Now it's completely up to you, but if you want to go deeper, reach down with your right hand and try to grab your big toe. Lift the knee a little higher upwards and potentially extend the leg all the way out and forward as you hold. If the straight legged option is a bit much, practice with a bent knee instead. And let your foot come all the way back down to the earth. Once you've done so, lift your other knee upward in the air. Grab the knee at first to just help it come up a little higher into the air. If you're going for the big toe option, hike the knee up a little higher, reach down for the attempted clasp. And once you straighten up your spine again, extend your left leg all the way forward once more.
And then for the moment, drop your foot all the way back down to the earth. Join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Take the next few moments to close your eyes and redirect all of your focus to your inhale and your exhale. Now, this next posture is a bit much. You can always substitute with the crow that we did a little while back. Otherwise, start out with your legs a little bit bent, and then cross your right leg over your left in a figure four leg shape. Now, another potential option is to lean forward and plant your hands on your legs, which helps you develop some flexibility. If you're able to go further, though, keep leaning forward and attempt to touch your fingers to the floor initially. Now, if you've gotten that far, walk your hands a bit further ahead. Come up onto the ball of your supporting leg, the foot of that leg, and then drop your hip a little closer to your heel there. And for the next few moments, just take a few breaths for your hips to get used to that. Now, by shifting your leg side to side, try to squiggle your left foot towards your left armpit and your right knee towards your right armpit, and then from there, sing down again. Lift your hips, lean just a little weight forward and ahead. And if you want to take one more step, curl your left heel to your bum and hover there. This one's called Galabasam. Then take your foot all the way back down to the earth. From there, slowly stand up. Drop your foot. Join your hands together in a prayer. Once more, close your eyes. Get your concentration back by focusing on your breath. Let your chest muscles and your arm muscles relax for a little bit, and it'll be easier to take it on the second side. All right, one more curl if you're not into that one we're doing. And if you're going for Galavasana, bend your legs just a little at first, and cross your left ankle over. Now remember, you can totally modify by leaning forward with your hand resting on your leg. You just sort of hang out there to develop some flexibility. Now, if you are going to go on, squat down a little more deeply, inch your fingers down a little closer to the earth, and again, just sort of pause there. Slow entrance is a great way to go. If you do indeed want to go a little further, walk your fingertips further ahead, come down to the deep squatting posture, and for the next few moments, just hang out there. Now, sometimes if you lift your hips a little higher, you can swing your leg from one side to the other, get your ankle and your knee a bit closer to the armpit. And then from that position there, lean forward. And if you're able to lift your back heel off of the earth, otherwise just put a little weight in your hands. Take your foot all the way back down. Slowly stand all the way up. Join your hands together in a prayer. And again, step all the way up to the front of your mat. Back to the flow. Use an inhale to sweep your arms upwards. Once you have, fold forward with your exhale. Lift to your fingers on the inhale. Chaturanga push up with an exhale. The up dog next with an inhale. Then the down dog with an exhale. Pigeon pose. Swing your right ankle to your left wrist until your knee and shin come down. Today, the rather than forward folding, walk your hands back a little bit and come up to a pseudo back bend. As you attempt to stack your shoulders right over your hips, and press your left heel a little further back, and if possible, even lift your back knee off the ground. <clears throat> lift up through the front of your chest just a little higher. And then take your back knee down to the earth. Walk your hands over to the left toward the edge of your mat. And then reach your left hand back toward the leg and feel free to hold that option. If you can go further though, bend your back leg, reach back and grab the inside of your foot and drag your heel a bit closer to your bum. If that's going pretty well, put your hand on the top of your foot, give it a little more downward press to stretch your quadriceps. Sometimes if you lift your hip a little higher, your heel will come closer to your rear, so give that a shot. And 
and then drop your foot all the way back down to the floor. Press back to the down dog initially and take the pigeon on the other side. Left ankle toward the right wrist. And with your toes curled under and back, come out for a back bend. Press strongly back through your rearmost heel as you bend. Now leaning forward, plant your hands on the ground just inside of your foot. Reach your right hand back. Place your hand near the leg and feel free to stay there. Now, if your hips really sink down, it puts more tension in your quads and makes it hard to bend the leg. So press down through your foot to lift your hip a little. Then bend your back leg. Reach back to try to grab your foot. And initially, just pull it a little closer to you. The next option is to slide your hand around so your hand rests on the top of the foot itself. <clears throat> with your elbow pointed upwards, press your heel inwards toward your body. Perhaps lift your hip just a little bit higher. Continue to press down. And then releasing out of that posture there, plant your hands on the floor beneath. Step back to the high push-up position. Drop your knees all the way down. And open up your thoracic spine. Reach your right arm all the way out to the side. Thread the needle by sweeping the arm all the way across your center line. If you've taken your head and your shoulder down to the floor, take the next few moments to rotate your spine to the side. Drive down to your hand to come all the way back up. Once your hands are positioned right under your shoulders, then take the same one on the other side. Left arm sweeps across. And some deep breaths yet again. Press down to your hand to come all the way back up. Next, shift to the high plank position and lower all the way down to your stomach. Prop yourself up on your elbows so that you resemble a sphinx. Press your elbows into the ground. Slide your shoulders down away from your ears toward your belt and lift your collarbones just a little bit higher for now. As you do this, just try to place the stretch right there in the middle section of your back. <clears throat> If you'd like to go deeper, lift your elbows off of the floor and check into your lower back. If that's painful. Definitely take your elbows back down. Otherwise, slide your shoulders down your back like soap bubbles in the shower. Pull your hands backward and lift your collarbones just a little bit. Take your elbows all the way back down to the floor. Crisscross your arms and let your chin rest upon them. Then you bend your legs and wave your ankles from one side to the other side. Now again, if it's best for your lower back, go with the cobra pose by propping yourself up on your elbows. You can sort of modify with a sphinx to start and then maybe straighten your arms. If that was easier before, walk your hands a little further backwards. And as you straighten your arms, rise up to your chest again. You get a slightly deeper stretch than the previous time. If you're going for the straight armed option, squeeze your elbows in toward your center line until your arms elongate. Just like before, slide your shoulders down and lift upward through your chin. Roll yourself all the way back down into the floor. Clench your hands into the bottom of your ribs. Press to an up dog with your knees lifted if possible. And then lift your hips upwards into the air for the down dog stretch. Let's take a few moments to elongate that. The kneeling camel's pose. Swing your knees forward so that you can come to a vertical upright position with your shoulders and hips right above your kneecaps. 
Once you've done that, take your hands to your waist. And if it's helpful for you, curl your toes under and back and make your heels just a little wi a bit wider. Now, initially squeeze your elbows back, root down through your legs to shift your hips forward, and then lift the bottom of your ribs upwards toward the ceiling to stretch your belly. Lift your chin and roll it back. Hold there and breathe. Use your next inhale to come up. Stick your rear out just a little bit and plant your hands on your knees. Press down on your uppermost thighs and roll your tail under to decompress your lower back. Next, come all the way back up. So if you have any lower back sensitivity, repeat like that again. Otherwise, gently rotate your chest off to the right. You can lean back a little bit if it helps. Try to use your right hand to grab your right heel, and then spin your chest upwards toward the ceiling. Now, if that went well, gaze left, reach the other hand back and attempt to grab that heel. And for the next few moments, shift your hips forward, lift up to the bottom rim of your ribs, and breathe as you hold. Use an inhale to come up. Stick your hips out again, backward, and plant your hands on your uppermost thighs, and then roll your tail under as you continuously press down. Now it's important to get that on both sides if you did the rotation. So back to the knees once more. Now as you rotate to the left, you'll most likely have to lean backward toward the wall behind you a bit to capture your foot. Try to do that. If that's gone pretty well, square your chest with the ceiling. Gaze backward over your right shoulder there. And then reach that hand all the way back for the attempted grasp. Now, if you get that, square everything with the front of your mat. Lift up to the bottom rim of your ribs. And for the next few moments, breathe into that. Mm -hmm. Use an inhale to come up. You can press by planting your hands on your upper thighs. Roll your tail under and press down. And then from there, crisscross your ankles, roll backward to a seated position. Now I'm going to spin sideways again so you can see me, but feel free to stay facing the front of your mat. Once you've done this, extend both legs. Cross your left leg over top of right. And again, I'll do my left so it looks like we're doing the same thing, or I'll do my right so it looks like we're doing the same thing. Then shift all the way over to the edge and draw your other heel back. And once you've done that, bear hug, squeeze your left knee with your right arm. Slide your hip a little further back, and just spill your, spin your belly around your thigh. Just rotate everything to the left and gaze straight back. And if you like to hook your arm over the leg, go for that. Otherwise, feel free to stick it out with the bear hug squeeze. And then release all that, and the same one on the other side. Extend the legs to start. Wrap your right leg over. Draw your other leg back. Bear hug, squeeze your right leg with your left arm. Slide that hip just a little further back, and rotate your torso off to the side. If you can do so effortlessly, hooking your elbow all the way over the leg is a great thing to do, so consider that as an alternative. And release. And we have to tighten down your midsection again. So plant your hands up near the front of your mat. Come to the cat cow kriya position. Now, if you like, you can do this one with your knees on the ground. Otherwise, straighten your legs completely. Either way, pretend you've got a glass of water near your spine and try not to lose a drop. So keeping your torso level, attempt to touch your left hand to your right shoulder, and then your right hand to your left shoulder. Alternate back and forth between both sides. You'll have a little swaying back and forth from one side to the other, which is fine. Try to keep relatively neutral in your spine. A few more rounds of those. And then with both hands on the floor, 
draw your right knee towards your chest, and then the left, and just alternate back and forth. Try to keep your torso relatively stationary and level again. Just a few more rounds. Then lift your hips up in the air for the down dog. All right, smooth sailing. Step your right foot forward to your thumbs. Take your back knee to the ground. Start out with your hands placed on the floor just inside of your foot. Just like the beginning of the class, let your hips sink nearer to the ground. If you're feeling more flexible than when you got here, consider taking your left elbow to the floor and potentially the right elbow as well. If all that turns out to be too much, then feel free to substitute with both arms straight instead. Today we're hanging out for just a little while longer in this pose to really develop some range of motion. Press all the way back up. Curl your toes under. Step back to the down dog. And then repeat on the other side. Step your left foot forward. Take your back knee all the way down to the earth. Let your hips settle down toward the floor. And breathe. Now, some days I very much like to stay up there. If you do want to go further, Consider taking your right elbow to the earth. If you want to go on past that point, take your left elbow down to the ground as well. Again, check in. If all of that is too much, take one of the previous variations. Get heavy, heavy, heavy in your hips. And then for the moment, press all the way up. Shift back to the cat-cow kriya position. Just roll over onto one of your hips and swing both legs forward toward the front of your mat. Now this final time, draw your heels a bit closer to your hips. You can grab your ankles if that's helpful, or your big toes. Rock some way backward to the rear of your mat. Lock your eyes on something solid, and then consider lifting your heels a little bit. If that's going pretty well, Take your heels apart until they're about knees width, and then slowly extend your feet outwards and upwards toward the ceiling. Slide your shoulders down away from your ears at the same time, and just hold there and breathe deep. If you want to make it harder, let go of your legs completely, take your hands together in the front, and then just hover there, breathing deeply. Take your heels together, Slide your legs straight, and then for now, just roll all the way down your back to lay down on the ground. Now finally, once you're laying down, reach both arms all the way out to your sides. Draw your knees toward your chest. Drop your knees over to the right. Press your knees closer to the floor with your right hand, and shift your gaze out to the left. Just try to relax and let go as you twist. Use an inhale to sweep your knees back up. And take the same posture on the other side. Use your left hand to press your knees closer to the floor. Gaze out over your right arm and twist your spine.
And then finally, find your way to the corpse pose, flat out on your back on the floor. If you prefer a seat of meditation, that's always fine as well. Just find whichever of the two is going to be the most comfortable for you. Take the next few moments to settle in. And if you need to make any final adjustments, do whatever you need to do to get your body comfortable enough to be still. So I have exercise-induced asthma, and I take my meds on the regular as I'm supposed to, but at the same time, I'm always interested in seeing whether or not certain breathing exercises will help my condition. And it turns out, while I have not been able to actually get rid of my asthma, of course, I've been able to mitigate it to some degree with breathing exercises. Now, I've tried many different options, but I think the one that seems to work the best for my body, at least, is to breathe less. Sometimes, if you overbreathe, it can actually trigger asthmatic attacks. Now, one byproduct of that practice that I've noticed is when breathing less, at the end of it, I usually feel really, really relaxed. And there's some merit to this. There's some recent research that suggests that if we can actually slow down people's breathing to some degree, it builds up carbon dioxide in the system. And that in and of itself has a somewhat sedative effect. Now, in general, when you're breathing on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're taking more than 16 breaths per minute, it typically means that you're breathing more than you actually have to. Sometimes breathing like that can actually shift you into fight or flight mode. Very subtle reaction that occurs when you're triggered in some way. Now, accelerating your breath can actually trigger that particular response. It can make you feel a little bit anxious and a little bit jacked up on energy. Now, the reciprocal is also true. If you can slow down your breathing, if you can get it down to under 12 breaths per minute, or perhaps with practice even down to three or four, you'll find yourself shifting to rest and digest mode, which is deeply calming. So today, as I have you focus on the spots throughout your body, I'm going to ask you to hold your breath out for every point that I have you focus on. As you do this, you will most likely become very slightly uncomfortable. Now, the discomfort that you're feeling is not a drop in oxygen levels. It's a raising in carbon dioxide, which is just what we want. So if you can, try to hold your breath out for the five to six seconds that I mentioned every time we focus on a point. But of course, if at some point that stresses you out or just doesn't feel good, feel free to return to normal breathing. Jump back into it when you're ready. And after a little while, you'll be able to do this lessened breath thing with regularity. So for now, just get still and quiet everywhere. Now let your breath be normal this time. Just pay close attention to your inhaling and exhaling without deepening either breath. Let your breath be shallow as it would be normally. As you can continue breathing normally, shift all of your awareness to your eyes. And the next time you exhale, hold your breath out while focusing on your eyes. Then inhale. As you exhale, focus on your ears and hold your breath out. Inhale. Exhale, right nostril and left nostril. Inhale. Exhale, right cheek and left cheek. Inhale. Exhale, upper lip and lower lip. Inhale, exhale, upper teeth and lower teeth. Inhale, exhale, tip of tongue. Inhale, exhale, center throat.
Inhale. Exhale. Tips of your shoulders. Inhale. Exhale. Elbows. Inhale. Exhale. Rests. Inhale. Exhale. The palms of your hands. Inhale. Exhale. Your fingertips. Inhale. Exhale. Your hips. Inhale. Exhale. Your knees. Inhale. Exhale. Your ankles. Inhale. Exhale. Bottoms of your feet. Inhale. Exhale, the tips of your toes. Inhale. Exhale, right and left side of your body. Inhale. Exhale, the back of your body. Inhale. Exhale, your navel. Inhale. Exhale, center chest. Inhale. Exhale, the tips of your shoulders. Inhale. Exhale, the back of your neck. Inhale. Exhale, the center of your chest. And take a deep breath in. Hold your breath. Send awareness from your hearts to your hands. From your hearts to the bottoms of your feet. From your heart to the base of the spine and again to the top of your head. And with an exhale, return to normal breathing. Take the next few moments to focus on your breath. And let your heart rate drop again. I'm going to deepen the effects of what you've already done. I'm going to ask you to self-pace. At the end of every exhale, hold your breath out until it becomes slightly uncomfortable. Once you reach that point, take a normal inhale and a normal exhale and repeat with another breath retention until it becomes slightly uncomfortable. Pay close attention to your reaction after every breath retention. If you have to gasp or take a really huge breath, that means you're holding out for a little too long. Try to time it so that you become moderately uncomfortable at the end of every exhale retention. 
Afterward, take a completely normal inhale and exhale and repeat. For the final few moments of our practice here, breathe only when absolutely necessary. And every time you hold your breath out, relax deeply. If you want to challenge yourself, hold your breath out a little while longer at the end of every exhale until it becomes actually uncomfortable. You might have to take a very slightly deeper inhale and exhale afterward, but still try to time it so you can take fairly normal breaths after every retention. And eventually that practice will help you get down to three to four breaths in a minute, which is deeply calming. But as I mentioned before, anything under 12 is great. about one more minute of that. Return to normal breathing patterns. Let your concentration relax. For the next few moments, just be present in your body. Be aware of everything going on. Sense the contact of your body against the floor. Your clothes draping your body entire. And all those little rippling currents of air brushing your skin on their way through the room. And very slowly and gently, so as not to break your present moment focus, let yourself roll all the way over and then onto one side. And with both eyes closed, come back to a seated and cross-legged posture of some type. Join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Remember the person you dedicated today's practice to. And take a moment to either pray for or wish for their happiness and their health. Take another moment to be grateful for the gift of another day. And if you wish, repeat aloud after me. May all sentient beings everywhere experience peace.